Hey guys! So, I thought it'd be cool for you guys to see my cat. This is uh, Aerie. So, this is my little kitty that I've told you guys about. She's not so little anymore, but, you know, she, she doesn't want to be held right now. But, this is Aerie. So, guys, um, today, if you were at service, you gotta, you know, get a longer version of what this, this study's about. But, this study's actually really cool. We're picking up in John chapter 16. And I'm going to give you a snapshot into understanding kind of the the roles of the Holy Spirit and what Jesus had to do. And it's actually really cool because the question is often, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> the question is often, often brought up. And in my own life, personally, I thought it too, man, I just want Jesus to be here with me. Like it would be so much better to just have Jesus walk with me every day. You know, that's what I thought. But we'll get into it. So, starting in John chapter 16, verse 5, it says, But now I am going away to him who sent me, and not one of you asked me where are you going. Yet, because I have spoken these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I am telling you the truth. It is for your benefit that I go away, because if I don't go away, <clears throat> the counselor will not come to you. If I go... I will send him to you. Now, if you come to actual service, you'll get a more breakdown of this in like the first couple verses, but I've got 10 minutes. So what's actually going on here is Jesus saying, you know, I have to leave. I have a job I have to do and fulfill as he is the son. He is His job, the work that God the Father gave him is to die rise, be this, this perfect, you know, sacrifice for us, die and rise again, and then go to heaven, be at the right hand of God, take up the glory in which he set aside to come down here and die for us, and then become our high priest and our intercessor, the one who takes, you know, intercedes for us daily. And so that's his job. Now, he does say that it is for our benefit and at the time, for the apostles' benefit for him to leave, and for the Holy Spirit, or the counselor, or also known as the helper, to come. And why do you say that? Why? What's so important? Well, one, continuing in verse 8, it says, When he comes, he will convict the world about sin, righteousness, and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I'm going to the Father and will no longer see me. And about judgment because the ruler of this world has been judged. So what's important to know here is one of the jobs of the Holy Spirit is to come down and convict, and convict specifically the world. So he is the driving force behind people feeling bad for their sins. That's the job of the Holy Spirit, convicting of sin because they don't believe in Jesus. And if they don't believe in Jesus, they'll die in their sins and go to hell. He also judges about righteousness because they think that their righteousness is good. But Jesus going to heaven and being with the Father was the example of a perfect righteous person living and dying. Yet our righteousness, if you allude to Isaiah, is like filthy rags. That's the best we got. So convicting people of what they think their righteousness is when it really is not righteous at all. On top of that, we'll be, ju we'll be convicting them of judgment, the judgment which has already been judged on the devil. That is who the ruler of this world is. The thing is, is the world has falsely judged Jesus, judged him so much that they crucified him. And even today, the world falsely judges Jesus, calling the people who really believe in him that Jesus, you know, he isn't real, or he wasn't really the Son of God. Oh, Jesus, he's okay with me and my sin. My sin doesn't matter. He loves me. They falsely judge when all they're really doing is following the the devil. That's who they really are led by. They don't really believe in Jesus and because of their wrong judgment on Jesus, they're convicted. So these are very important things to remember, this conviction of the Holy Spirit on the world. But then what about us as Christians? Continuing on in verse 12, it says, I still have many things to tell you, but you can't bear them now. Then, 
or when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak of his own, but he will speak of whatever he hears. He will also declare to you what is to come. He will glorify me because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Everything the Father has is mine. This is why I told you that he takes from what is mine and will declare it to you. So the Holy Spirit, being our helper, being our counselor, will be coming and teaching us truths. The apostles at the time did not truly understand who Jesus was or what he had come to do at this time and moment in history. They still are foggy. They still don't understand it completely. And it's not until after Jesus' death, resurrection, and them seeing him, and then at Pentecost in Acts, getting filled with the Holy Spirit, are they really truly understanding the purpose and the job of Jesus Christ and what he came to do and what he's doing to this day. So, the Holy Spirit for them gave them revelation into the future of, like, one, writing the scripture. He, it, like, the scripture is inspired by God, and I believe it's inspired by the Holy Spirit in the apostles at that time, as well as look at Revelation. Not only did John get inspired to write this book of the Bible, but of future times that haven't even happened yet. Guys, for us, though, the Holy Spirit does give us revelation. As we read God's word, the Holy Spirit reminds us, as it says, of what Jesus has said. Think about that. One, he reveals all truth, right? Two, he, he reminds us of what Jesus said. So in this reading and trying to understand God's word and, and dig, digging deep, he will reveal the truths of his word to us. And when we come to a, a, a hard time in life, he will remind us of Jesus' words, of God's words. So God is, the Holy Spirit is this helper. Now take in mind the question, what if, well, I want Jesus. I personally want Jesus here with me. The problem is if Jesus was here on earth, he wouldn't be interceding for us in heaven. That's a whole thing. But think about it. When he came down from heaven, he came in a physical body. So he's limited to a physical space. He has to be there. But the Holy Spirit can be with all of us at all times because he is in fact that spirit and he resides within us think about how cool that is god himself his spirit resides within you and within me and as the bible says where two or three are gathered he is there that is the exact point of saying where we gather because the holy spirit is within us he is there in that presence and he is there with us and we become the true indefinite church so guys i just I'm blown away by this, and I hope you see that it is so much better that the Holy Spirit, who is in Ephesians, it says, in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13, says he is our seal, our proof of our salvation when we believed in Jesus. Think about that. That seal lives inside you and lives inside me, and is the reason we can, we have this affirming spirit of saying, yes, I am saved. I have put my life in Christ and I have God living in me, his spirit living in me and helping me so that I can live Christ-like every day. That That's amazing. Don't take that for light. Be blessed that that is what God is doing in your life. So with all that, I pray that you go out and you share the gospel and you read the word because God, the Holy Spirit can't remind you of Jesus' words if you don't read the word. So guys, with that, I pray that you stay safe, uh, share the gospel, and be blessed.